Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the show. Uh, everyone's here, including uh, Dave Letterman. How you doing, Dave? Morning, Howard. How are you? Uh, Dave's stopping by. He's going to um, let it all hang out today, he told me. Howard, let me ask you a question. Do you, do you think if I kidnapped a Cambodian baby and, and offered it to Angelina Jolie, uh, she would give me anal? You know, there's a very good chance of that, Dave. I love you on this show, by the way. Let me just say, I love when you come in here because uh, you're so different than on that TV show where they don't let you say anything. You've got to be pissed. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, I have another thought here today. You know, if, if Ethiopians are, are really hungry, then why don't they just eat the flies that are buzzing around their head? Right. That's so don't true. Think? Yeah. I can I get behind know. that, Dave. Yeah. Well, anyway, Dave is going to be with us today. David Letterman. And uh, he's not going to be like the David Letterman on TV, so don't turn off your radio. Yeah, he's right. actually going to be funny. He's, he's going to be real funny. funny. On that show. No, he's going to let it rip, right? Ex absolutely, Howard. All right, good having you here. Yeah. He's already been hilarious. Yeah, he's funny the first... Where is your microphone, Artie? Right here. Oh, there you go. Okay. You got it? Oh, I can see this is going to be a nightmare I think today. Artie's uh, actually broadcasting from Indiana. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> he's sitting there right with Dave. <laughs> you know what I like to do, Howard? I, I'd love to drive up to Paul Shaver's house in the middle of the night and, and go to a bathroom on his lawn. What do you think? <laughs> hey, uh, Artie, how come you've never been on Dave's show? Uh, I don't know. Is Dave, that... why don't you ever have Artie on? I don't know. We can't afford him in the budget. Maybe we'll have money. Would you ever have Fred on? Fred? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah how would you know the difference? He could get the gum off our seats. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, I, I, hey, there's a job for Fred. Hey, Fred, get the gum off my seat. There you go. Like so many of these guys, like you ever see Robin Williams when he does a serious movie and he becomes the serious Robin Williams? Yeah. You want to kill yourself. Suddenly you know. he doesn't know how to speak, he can't talk. He... Well, it's like the way Oprah um, can talk black when she wants to. Right. Oh, don't get me started on Oprah. <laughs> oh, I forgot Dave Letterman's here. By the way, Howard, you know, yeah. yes, you, know, Dave. you know, Rosie O'Donnell has a new book uh, out. It's, it's called Men Are uh, From uh, Mars and I'm a Fat Slob. Oh, okay. All right. Well, anyway, uh, hold on there, Dave. Here he is, Bush, the President of the United States. You know, he's the, he's the most powerful dude in the world. And what's his vacation? He's going to go to a ranch and pretend to be a cowboy. At Crawford, Texas? Where the hell is that? And yeah. We need to get in touch with him. I wonder, do they bring out, like, Indians so he can run around with his shoot holster him. and they shoot him? <laughs> Come here, you engine! Howard, do you think uh, President Bush is well hung? What do you think? I don't know, Dave. <laughs> that never occurred to you to ask that question. That's sort of not where I was going with it. <laughs> All right. Dave, you had, you had 80 minutes to clear your throat. Uh, yeah. Bill Cosby said. <laughs> In all your thoughts, you never cared whether the president was well hung. Well hung. <laughs> but I believe that this is an adjustment. An adjustment. An adjustment. Yeah, because this, this judgment is, is killing us. Well, it's a reaction to the craze that went on a few years ago with the dot com. So everybody, sit tight. Don't get nervous. Do you really think General Electric's going out of business? I don't think so. God, I hope Hold so. up. You hope so. <laughs> Dave Letterman joining us. How are you over there, buddy? Good. Everything good? Yeah. You, I just going to say you mentioned something about uh, the food industry. You know, I like to eat food in aluminum foil, so when it uh, comes out on the other side, it's already wrapped, and I, you know, I never have to wipe. Wow. You don't talk like this on your show. That's synergy for you. That's, that's There's a that's lot synergy, of thoughts. Exactly. No, Howard, cabaret's working. Howard, he's working. shoes on? What? That was the main thing. Did I have shoes. Know? Got these. This is exactly what I wore. Yeah. Do, do you ever look at a woman and say to yourself, damn, that bitch would make a great leather coat? Wow. <laughs> Dave Letterman, you are. <laughs> uh, <hey. laughs> as long as you have the shoes on, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I got like I got thrown out of a restaurant. Oh, that's funny. And I don't think I was doing anything all that bad. By the way, Howard, have you seen Robert Plant lately? Uh, no. He looks like my 85-year-old grandmother. His, his fans are throwing stool softeners on stage for the guy. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me tell you something. Everything's bowel humor with you. Yeah, he's Dave Letterman. When he's not on that show on CBS, oh he's a whole God. different guy. He's not a cerebral. Yeah. yeah. Was that, yeah. was that one from Las Vegas? Happened? Yes. What, you know, I, I'd like to ask Suzanne. Is there Suzanne? Was that it? Yes, Suzanne. I'd like to ask her a question. What, what's the difference between a G-spot and a golf ball? What is it? You know, a guy will actually search for the golf ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Vegas joke. Come on. Dave Letterman will be joining us this morning. Oh, that was not a Vegas yeah, joke. That's yeah, a Vegas joke. <laughs> yes, Frank, go ahead. You're on the air. <laughs> You're from Las Vegas? You can walk to New York. Oh, no, I'm from Los Angeles originally. That makes Malibu, sense. Malibu, actually. Malibu, California. You ought to walk with a 50-pound backpack. A flaxseed. To New yeah, fill it with flaxseed <laughs> and walk to New York. You know, you're, you're, you're really, really a mean person. No, I'm not mean. I'm honest. Then why do you want to stay on the phone with him? He's a real mean person. 
I'm very disappointed in you, Howard Stern. I thought you were really a nice person. And you're a sick, you know sick woman. Huh? Howard. Yes, like, yeah, Dave Letterman wants to I'd talk like, to you. Suzanne, I'd like to ask you a question. Did you yes, ever see my, my interview with Ted Koppel? Because, did I uh, hear your interview with Ted Koppel? Right. Because, no, you know, not. that that man has more bags under his eyes than a grocery store. All right. Yeah. And what's your point, Dave? I have no idea. Okay. You had no point. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Letterman's a nice person. I know what the point is. Yeah. Well, Dave Letterman's here and he's my friend. Well, Aren't you, know, you Dave? I think exactly. That, I think that he's a nicer person than you. Oh, stop it. And my my father was in the movie business. He knows more important people than you. So how old I don't are know you? Why you think that you're so? Good. You're a child. How old are you? I'm not a child. I'm 31 years old. You I'm talk like a baby. My dad knows more important people than you. You're like a baby. I had yogurt yogurt for breakfast. All right, Suzanne, come on. I had yogurt for breakfast. I had yogurt. Try vomiting, you flat slob. (laughs) Oh, flat slob yourself. Try vomiting, okay? I vomiting too, Howard. Hey, let's hear from a real comedian. Dave Letterman, you you do that show. I know they rein you in because you're on uh, national television. Do a little of that top ten. I got a list for you. We couldn't use it on the show, but let's let's bring it up here. All right, here goes Dave Letterman, top ten. What is this? The category from the home office, Howard. Uh, These are reasons now. Top ten reasons. I stayed at CBS rather than go to ABC. Okay. Are you ready? Go ahead. Here we go. Top ten reasons I stayed at CBS rather than uh, go to ABC. Number ten, Les Moonves gives good oral. <laughs> I can't stand that know-it-all, Jew. Uh, let's see. Oh, number nine. <laughs> number nine, my audience is a bunch of retards, and they won't be able to find me on another channel. Yeah, sure, that makes sense. <laughs> number eight. Uh, if, I, if I would have uh, taken Ted Koppel's job, he would have crapped in his diaper. All right, you were caring about Ted exactly. Koppel. Yes. Uh, number seven, because who wants to be a millionaire sucks. Okay. You know, when I was having uh, my serious heart problem, I kept thinking one thing, Howard. Why couldn't this have happened to Regis? So these are your reasons for staying How with Stan. How are we at now? <laughs> this is going on a long time. Go ahead. Here we go. Number six, the gap in my teeth is bigger than ABC's overall network rating. Okay. Number five, CBS is paying me $31 million a year, and that's why. <laughs> Number four, I might not be able to get those A-list guests from Survivor anymore. <laughs> yeah. Number three, so Vinny Vivali uh, can keep kissing my ass. Okay. Number two, because I'm a big pussy and afraid to change. And the number one reason, Howard, I stayed at CBS rather than go to ABC, so you and me, Howard, can keep torturing Les Moonvis. Well, there you go. <laughs> All right, there you go. Yeah. See why he gets thirty something million dollars a year? No, thirty one. Thirty one. Thirty one million a year. Yeah. No, yeah, we love having you here, and and, and uh, worth every cent. Uh, I tell you, that guy's an alien. I, I think Les Moonvis is. Why an are you alien. making fun of Les? What did he do to you? The guy, the guy's why, why running the network. He's doing a great job. He's got the number one ratings. Yeah. Why are you always at odds with your boss? I don't know. You're what? so wild. You're such a wild man. He's a rebel. Uh, well, you know what my uncle used to say, Howard. You know, give me a child who knows nothing about sex, and and you're you know, you're giving me my next victim.